Question 7 on the Core Maths Predictive Paper for 2025, um, and this links to the wind turbine in the preliminary material. It's a horrible question. Uh, the Department of Energy gives this formula for calculating the power from a wind turbine. It is claimed that in ideal conditions, only 7,000 large wind turbines would be needed to power the homes in the whole of the UK. The air density in the UK ranges between 1 and 1.4 kilograms per metres cubed. Using the power formula from above, determine if this claim is justified and state any assumptions. Okay, so I'm going to start with my assumptions and the first assumption I'm going to make is how many people actually live in the UK because we're talking about the whole of the UK number of homes. So I'm going to say 70 million people live in the UK. And as we're talking about the number of homes, I'm going to use the fact that there's probably about three people on average that live in every home. So we're going to say three people live in every home. Then let's look at our formula and what we're going to have to use. So the first thing is the air density. Now they've told us it's between 1 and 1.4. So I need to be clear what I'm going to use, and I'm going to go right in the middle. So air density is always 1.2 kilograms per metres cubed. Then I need the sweep area of these turbines. Now when I read the preliminary material, it said that you know, wind turbines are getting bigger and bigger with the largest ones having diameters of over 200. So we need a value that's going to be 200 or more. So I'm going to say large turbines have a diameter of 210 meters. Then the capacity factor. Now again, using the preliminary material and the fact that this question is talking about ideal conditions, we want a capacity that is the higher end because it's ideal. So we're going to say capacity factor is 40% which is the higher end for our preliminary material. Then the wind speed. Now again, ideal conditions. And we can see from our preliminary material that there is a range that's given us again, which is, I think it was 3 and 25. So let's go bang in the middle and say wind speeds are always... 14, let's avoid decimals, in ideal conditions. And loads of assumptions here. Now because I'm using the sweep area, that means that when this, these rotors from the wind turbines are turning round, the area that they cover, so I'm looking at the area of the circle, so pi r squared, I was using a diameter of 210, so my r is going to be 105. So 105 squared times by pi, which will be 11,025 pi meters squared. And just check, yes, our formula is in meters squared as well. You can leave it in terms of pi, keep it nice and exact. Now we just need to work out how many homes are going to be in the UK. Or actually, we can work that out in a little bit. Let's find the power for one large turbine. So sub into the formula. P equals 0 0.5 times by my air density, which I've said I'm using 1.2, times by my area, which I just worked out, times by my capacity factor as a decimal, so 0 0.4, times by the wind speed cubed. 
and we're going to type that all in type it in as well so that you can make sure that you're doing it right which gives me 228099230.02 and that's in watts. The preliminary material talks to me about homes which can be powered per megawatt. So I need to convert that to megawatts and to do that we divide by 1 million. So one turbine will do I'm typing it in just because I want to make sure I'm, I'm um, really exact. It will do 22.809, etc. megawatts from one turbine. So they're saying that. 7,000 large wind turbines are needed to power all of the homes in the UK. So we'll do 7,000 times by that number that we just had on our calculator. Which gives us... One five nine six six nine point four six one megawatts for seven thousand turbines. Now we need to see if this is going to be enough. Well, I said in my assumption there were seventy million people in the UK, and that the average number of people per home is going to be three. So I need to divide that by three to work out the total number of homes. That gives me a horrible number. So let's say approximately, I don't know, 23.4 million homes. The preliminary material tells me <coughs> that where have I got that one thousand two hundred megawatts powers one million homes well I'm saying we've got twenty three point four million so if you think of this as like an equivalent relationship, directly proportionate, and we times our 23.4 by 1,200, we'll get to a 080 megawatts. That's how much is needed. Well, these wind turbines are producing 159,000. So yes. They will produce more than enough. Question 8. The table shows some information about the number of students in a year group. A teacher wants to find out what students think about the school's canteen. They decide to take a sample of 60 students stratified by age and by year group. Calculate the number of year 11 girls in the sample. So let's see on our table, there are 53 year 11 girls. The total number in the whole school is 573. And my sample size is 60. So I want that fraction of 60. Type it into my calculator, 5.549, and we'll round that up six students. The name of this type of sampling is stratified sampling. That was given to us in our question. And then two advantages. 
The first advantage is it's less time consuming than a census. Asking everyone in the school. And then the second reason is that it is going to proportionately represent the ages and genders in the school. So it will be a representative sample. question we've got a histogram there are 22 members with ages in the range of 40 to 65 so this is 22 the area because remember for a histogram we've got this formula triangle that we can use to help us where the frequency is the frequency density which is my y-axis this measurement times by my class width this measurement so the frequency is going to be the area we don't know the scale for the frequency density, but we can use this to help us. This has got a length of 25. We don't know the height. Let's just call that x for now. So 25 times by x equals 22, area of a rectangle. And that gives us x equals 0 0.88. So let's mark that onto our diagram. This is 0 0.88. So I'm going to work out then what each square is going to be. Well, there are 11 little squares underneath that. So it's going up in 0 0.08. I've just divided by 11. So I can start to add on some little values if I need to. But it's asking me for the number of members with the age range of 25 to 40. So I want to know the area of this bar. So let's just count how many little squares have we got up to here. 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. Each little square was 0 0.08. So times that, and that gives me 2.4. So this is 2.4. So I've got a rectangle with a height of 2.4 and a width of 15. So the area is going to be 36. Question 10. Alex wants to save money for a holiday for her 40th birthday, which is in five years. She wants to invest some money in a savings account. So they'll have five, at least 5,000 by the time of the trip. She opens a savings account of 4.25% compound interest. Work out the minimum that she needs. So when I do compound interest, the amount that we get at the end is always equal to the multiplier to the power of years. So we're increasing its interest, right? So my multiplier is going to be 100% plus 4.25% which is 104.25%, and then we divide that by 100 to change it to a decimal, 1.0425. She wants at least £5,000. So I want to have 5,000 is going to be smaller than then my multiplier to the power of 5, because it's 5 years. I want at least 5,000. times by the amount that's invested, okay? And that's what we want to find. So we'll divide both sides by 1.0425 to the power of 5. And that gives me 4060.60. Will be less than x. That means x has to be bigger than 4060.60. Um, it's in the nearest pound, so I want the next pound up because it has to be bigger than that. So 4061 pounds. 
Question 11. A car salesman records information about cars he is selling. We've got a list of words, qualitative, continuous, discrete and quantitative. And we want to pick a word for each of them. The number of doors. Well, that's a number. So it's going to be quantitative. And it's also going to be discrete. You can't have 0.5 or 0.6 of a door. So I can have either of those as my answer for that one. The age. Age is continuous because we could keep measuring it to a year, to a month, to a week, to a minute, to a second, etc, etc. And it's a number as well. So that is discrete. Both of those would be fine. The colour then. Colour is a qualitative because it's a word and it's also discrete it's an exact thing but I think qualitative would be a better answer for that one question 12 for each of the following state of the data would be primary or secondary primary basically means that you collect the data yourself or the data that you're using has been collected for the same purpose that you are using it for so Richard wants to know his friend's favourite colour and he asks his 10 friends. That's going to be primary. He's found it himself. Laura wants to know how many cars travel down a street between 9 and 10 o'clock. She stands outside a house and records them. She's collecting it on herself. Primary. Holly wants to know how many people live in her village. She looks it up on the internet. Now, because we do not know if the information that she's looking up has been collected by somebody for the same reason she wants it for, this is going to be secondary. Question 13. A shop offers a 3% discount to the colleagues on all items. The manager uses Excel to work out how much money certain items will cost. So part A says find out the value of this. So if I'm decreasing something by 3%, the easiest thing to do is to times it by 0 0.97. So that's all I'm going to do. 210 times 0 0.97, which is 203 pounds 70. And then 850 times 0 0.97, 84 pound 50. Part B, write down the formula used in C2. C2 is this cell here, so it will be equals, and that's the B2, times by, which on Excel is a little asterisk, 0 